and he returns. I am back, True Seekers. Um, why the Virginia governor's election is freaking out the Democrats. I mean, my God, who hasn't gone there to uh, among the uh, uh, Democratic power brokers to support Terry McAuliffe, who who was the governor? He was the governor there. He was the governor, what, from 2014 to 2018 or something like that? I know he was governor for one term. Um, and you would think... Now that Virginia is a so-called blue state, that he wouldn't be having too much of a a, a problem uh, against the former private equity executive and uh, Donald Trump acolyte, Glenn Youngkin. Now, Glenn's trying to cover all that up, but he is as much of a Trumpist as, uh, oh, hell, I don't know, pick somebody. Uh, as Rudy Giuliani, probably. But here's the thing. There, there's there's less than a week to go before this election. And it's gotten very, very tight, this race between McAuliffe and Youngkin. And that has got the Democrats upset because they can't figure out why. Um, back in 2019, for the first time in 20 years, the Democrats won full control of the Virginia uh, uh, government. They had the governor's office the, uh, the, and the legislature, the House of Delegates, I think is what they call it. When I lived in Virginia years and years and years ago, it was run by the Bird family, Harry Bird and, and his son, or whatever. And they were all Republicans. But this is back in the day when the Republicans were just kind of quiet closet racist. They didn't make a big deal about the fact that they were racist. They didn't make a big deal about the fact that they hated the common people. Um, they were just kind of quiet, overfed, overstuffed Republicans. And everybody went about their business. Nobody really gave a shit. <laughs> See, I lived in Virginia in, 19, in the mid-60s. And when I lived there, it was still illegal for white folk and black folk to get married. Christ, Malloy, how old are you? But anyway, a recent poll from Monmouth University has um, uh, McAuliffe and Yunkin uh, in a dead heat. And... As is pointed out by political observers who have access to more information than I do, Virginia has this habit of picking governors from the party that doesn't hold the White House. That's one of the reasons they had uh, Republican governors for so long, because Democrats uh, had this habit of getting elected to the presidency of the United States. Now, what... What the Democrats are most concerned about, this is like this election is seen as a predictor or a harbinger of next year's midterms. Doom, doom, doom. Here we are back to that. Um, and mobilizing the voters in your base, whether you're a Christian fascist like the followers of Trump and the entire corpse the Republican Party, or if you're Democrats, it doesn't make any difference. You have got to motivate the core base of your party to get out there and vote. Now, with the Christian fascists, we know who the the, the base is. There are other Christian fascists. Gee, that's very easy. But with the Democratic Party, you've got older folks, students, people of color, uh, liberals, uh, uh, progressives, uh, professionals, college educated. How do you motivate them all? It's very difficult being a Democratic Party organizer trying to get the vote out. Now, none of this is good news for the Democratic Party because they are confronting multiple warning signs that the voters in Virginia are just not all that fired up about the governor's race or about politics in general. See, part of the problem, a lot of Democrats, (laughs) because Democrats are not highly motivated unless there is a real threat like this filthy pig subhuman Donald Trump, that will motivate Democrats when when there's something uh, and it has to be clearly definable. It has to be seen. I mean, you can't motivate the 
vast majority of Democratic voters with the, with this talk about global warming. Or you can't motivate them with the talk about, um, well, a woman's going to lose her right to privacy. Now, the hardcore base, yes, those issues are very important. But the vast majority of Democrats, after Trump was kicked to the curb, a lot of people in the Democratic Party thought, well, that's over. And the truth is, it had only just begun. January 6th this year was the beginning, not the end of anything. But but the Democratic voters, Democratic Party voters, self-identified, um, yeah, yeah, I've got things to think about. We got rid of Trump. That's all that matters. No, the Democrats did not get rid of Trump. And Glenn Youngkin, this former thug with the private equity firm, he was an executive, which means he, 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 he made nothing, he produced nothing, he did nothing except work for the benefit of his upper income, one one hundredth to one percent uh, of the population clientele, helping them figure out all sorts of different ways to work the system of capitalism to amass even greater fortunes. And in that process, producing nothing except wealth for the individuals whose money was involved, right? And not even their money was involved. It was just manipulating uh, what funds they did have into bigger and bigger piles. What did I just talk about before the break? Now, the same poll, Monmouth, uh, Monmouth University poll, found that the Christian fascists in Virginia, and they're still called Republicans, are much more motivated and much more enthusiastic than Democrats about this election and that the gap between uh, the, the, the two parties, the enthusiasm gap, has widened. And making all this worse for Democrats are findings from a series of focus groups uh, that were conducted this year by a Democratic firm called Lake Research Partners, and it targeted Democrats considered less likely to turn out at the polls. You know, you're, you sell, say you're a Democrat. Why, why are you not highly motivated? Well, I found a couple of reasons that some Virginia women are uninspired by the, the politics in Virginia right now. Now, here's what they found among black women. There's frustration that Democrats won't deliver for them. Oh, my God, this is something that people of color in this country have dealt with since after Reconstruction. I mean, the promises from the Democratic Party, well, n not back then, but, but all right, let me rephrase it. This is what black folk have discovered about politicians in general. They talk the talk, but when it comes time to walk the walk, they don't do it. The politicians don't do it. Well, I'll catch you next time, all right? That kind of attitude. So... To a lot of black women, it, it, according to this, this uh, research, it doesn't much matter which party's candidates win. And that was explained by Joshua Ulibari, who heads that firm's research, the uh, Lake Research Partners. He's the head honcho. And among younger women, especially Latinas and, and, and white women, there's a sense that, like I mentioned a minute ago, the Trump danger's passed. And now everybody can just keep, kick back and say, boy, I'm glad that's over. Mr. Ulibari said, quote, they think they have slain the giant. They think Republicans are more sane and centered now. End quote. Well who's going to break it to them that that's not the case? Obama's been trying. Biden's been trying. Harris has been trying. Um, Terry McAuliffe has been trying. To, to let these so-called suburban women and white women and the Latinas who work four jobs in order to make ends meet and the young women who are still struggling in college or just entered the workforce to help them understand all these disparate groups. Listen, it, it, you, you're, you're wrong. The giant of ugliness and hatred and divisiveness is not dead. 
It's out there organizing and it's going to crush you unless you wake up to the fact that it is not dead and vote and take people with you to vote. Now, of course, this challenge goes way beyond the state of Virginia and their governor's race. According to the New York Times, almost half of women in four crucial swing states, that would be Arizona, Pennsylvania, Wisconsin, and here in the Peach State, Georgia, almost half of women are paying less attention to politics since the orange vomit left office. That's according to a survey taken a couple of months ago by American Bridge 21st Century. That's a Democratic uh, super political uh, action committee, super PAC. Now, this includes 46 percent of Biden voters, particularly those who are younger, are college educated or are city dwellers. And then focus groups that the same firm conducted uh, in August, three months later, showed the same findings. 46% of people who voted for, for Biden aren't paying attention because they figured they got rid of the demon, the Antichrist. And the Antichrist, the demon, has not been gotten rid of. The son of a bitch materializes in Bedminster, uh, New Jersey, or Mar-a-Lago, <laughs> Florida, and he sends out his, his notices to his minions all over the goddamn uh, country. And the, and, and the ones who still call themselves Republicans, but they're not, they're Christian fascists, wait with a bated breath for every single thing that comes from on high, from the orange vomit, the semi-literate fuck who sits wherever he sits, gnawing on his cheeseburgers and french fries. Hi, Truth Seekers. Mike Malloy here. As you know, we've switched formats and are now broadcast exclusively on the Progressive Voices Network. So that means you get fewer program interruptions, no corporate commercials, and lots of profanity. But our format change also means some of our radio listeners no longer hear the program. It's been a while since I mentioned our podcasts, so you may have forgotten that there is a way to listen to this program anytime you need a good dose of screaming. Visit MikeMalloy.com and subscribe to our podcast. As a podcast subscriber, you can download the program to your mobile device and take me with you wherever you go. And if you have a friend who needs a dose of truth-seeking, you can give a gift subscription as well. That's MikeMalloy.com and never miss a minute of the uncensored fun and frivolity.